welcome this afternoon. We're uh, going to be telling you a little bit about the Anderson Brothers and Johnson Company and the story of red granite, really granite itself. Uh, the story of the Anderson Brothers uh, and Johnson Company is a great story with regard to Marathon County red granite. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit about that story in the next, in the next few minutes. Um, but first of all, I want to begin with um, some natural resources of Marathon County. The, uh, the Marathon County uh, white pine brought great wealth to this county, as well as uh, uh, clay, a uh, red clay out in the town of Ringle. But another part of that was the Marathon County red granite, a brilliant red granite that was uh, a big part of our economy for many years. and and in, in essence still continues uh, to this day up in the town of Texas. Uh, but it was this red granite that uh, sparked a variety of different industries. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about those this afternoon. But the center of the universe for this, uh, this granite was a little place called Granite Heights up in the, um, the town of Texas and across the river into the town of uh, or now the village of Maine. Uh, this is where pretty much the, the story of granite in Marathon County starts uh, and continues uh, to this day. It started with an L.S. Cohn, who in the, seven, in the 1870s, um, in his land, you can see his land uh, on the bottom of the map here uh, with, uh, along the Wisconsin River, um, he had some land and he stumbled across the vein of this granite uh, in the 1870s. And he, he immediately saw the great value of this hard, durable uh, stone and he started to quarry it. And, with, uh, and he uh, continued into that uh, for a while. There was a little economic depression in the early 1890s that forced them out of business. But uh, a sidelight to Mr. Cohn's business adventures with granite was he had a partner, Mr. Robertson, who was from Scotland and stories coming out of uh, a variety of newspapers in Wisconsin made mention that uh, this Mr. Robertson was making uh, curling rocks and curling stones for a variety of curling teams within Wisconsin. So the story of that is uh, I, mean to develop that story a little bit, but just so that you know that the, uh, the granite was continuing uh, to, be hard, to, be, to be quarried here up in the town of Texas. Um, but because of the economic turndown in the early 1890s, uh, the Cones got out of the, uh, the business and uh, Anderson Brothers and Johnson in 1895 took up the reign of, of, of this business. And we'll talk a little bit about um, these three in, in a minute, but there were a larger, a larger element of the, of the family that were a part of the initial uh, ownership of the company. But in 1895 is when uh, the company, uh, as we know it, Anderson Brothers and Johnson started to take off. We begin with Gustav Anderson coming from Sweden um, and in 1888 and of course in 1895 uh, he along with his partners uh, started Anderson Brothers and Johnson. But at this point in time I just want to mention the, um, the Swedish immigration into Marathon County. Uh, looking at census records into, into this point in time in the 1895s and 1900s, um, this was uh, uh, drawing a lot of Swedes into this part of Marathon County into, into Granite Heights. Uh, we're not sure if it was the, the word back into Sweden, especially back into Varmland, a uh, part of Northwestern Sweden that immigrants started to come, but they started to come and they come to, they came to Wassa, they came to Granite Heights, 
uh, they must have had some kind of experience with working with granite because it didn't take them very long. And they were a part of the granite industry in Granite Heights around beginning in the 19, early 1900s. I, uh, also, I'll go and talk now about William Anderson, again, an immigrant from Sweden coming to uh, Granite Heights a little bit later, 1891. Uh, again, an organizer of Anderson Brothers and Johnson in 1895, died in 1920. Then there was Charles Enoch Johnson, uh, bo born in Sweden, uh, coming from Sweden in 1888. Um, and then uh, again, uh, Secretary Treasury, Treasurer of Anderson Brothers and Johnson in 1895. Um, so these were the three, um, the three mainstays of Anderson Brothers and Johnson. And they took over the, the company, they took over the Granite Heights uh, quarrying of Granite uh, in 1895. And we'll tell their story. This is uh, 1900 in Granite Heights. Granite Heights is still up on the Wisconsin River. Uh, a little bit north of Brokaw. Uh, it isn't like it used to be. Um, there's still houses. Uh, the train still runs runs by it. Um, but the the uh, post office, the station is gone. Uh, this is uh, Main Street in Granite Heights. Uh, I would say maybe in the uh, early 1900s. Uh, it was the, with the depot, um, and this was a very handy spot for the granite because they had the railroad uh, just um, coming right beside it to carry off a lot of that, lot of that granite. And of course, then the quarrying started, the quarrying, the 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 bringing up of that of that red granite. Uh, to the factories uh, there by, uh, I'm going to go back a little bit and show you that picture of, of Granite Heights because in the bottom of uh, the picture you'll see that railroad spur going into that factory where they were uh, making um, the, some of the markers, some of the producing the, the red granite markers, monuments, um, whatever they happened to be doing at that time in Granite Heights. We'll skip ahead a little bit. This is the quarry. This was hard work. Um, and also another picture of that, of the quarry here in Granite Heights. An unusual story, I mentioned that the, um, the quarrying was also done across the river uh, in the town, what was then the town of Maine, now the village of Maine. Uh, but what they would do is they would ferry the granite across the Wisconsin River uh, to their to their factory uh, in Granite Heights. So this was uh, they were harvesting, quarrying the the rock, and bringing it onto the east side of the uh, the river at Granite Heights. So. So the products, some, so one of the, especially in the early days, they, uh, they used this granite uh, from Granite Heights to, to make the uh, Civil War, the Grand Army of the Republic statue uh, that at one time gra graced the uh, courthouse on the 400 block. Uh, but this was all made out of Marathon County granite uh, and carved and manufactured in, in Granite Heights. Uh, there were skilled craftsmen that was able to, to craft the statue of the Civil War soldier. Uh, great craftsmen that would be able to make, that, make this whole uh, statue itself, this monument. This is where the monument sits today in court, on the courthouse grounds, on the southeast side of the courthouse grounds. And again, the very fine work in the early days, 1888, they were able to manufacture this, um, this statue uh, here in Marathon County. And of course, this was a tribute to the 
uh, to, the, to the soldiers of the Civil War. Marathon County granite was also used as a building material. Uh, this is the Plummer, Ma Plummer Mansion, it's now gone, but you can see the first floor was all decked out in, in red granite, the rough cut, not the polished, but it was still uh, gra a granite uh, foundation for the, for the Plummer House. Uh, the Marathon County Bank, also red uh, granite, I know this was a colorized picture, but this is uh, black and white. You can envision what what that uh, granite um, facade looked like um, back in the early part of the 1900s. So again, it used very much for building materials, building uh, foundations. The the gas company's building on the corner of Jefferson and and Fourth Street. The foundation uh, you can see was was a granite base to that foundation. Uh, uh, so the Anderson brothers and Johnson had their quarry up and their major factory up in the in a Granite Heights. But then with the flood of 1912, uh, that their factory got flooded out uh, and they decided to move their whole uh, factory, their whole uh, manufacturing complex to to Wassa. Uh, this building is still here. Uh, it's a little bit to the north of Town Line Road between the two railroad tracks. So when the Anderson brothers and Johnson decided to build in this specific place, they had two different railroad lines uh, coming uh, on both sides of the factory. So they were able to utilize both, uh, both railroads uh, going to the east and the west and to the north and the south to distribute their uh, their products, and their main pro their main product was uh, in the later years was markers, monuments for for cemeteries uh, throughout throughout the world. Really, uh, they became very famous for their brilliant red monuments. Um, you know, various headlines throughout the years indicating that they were indeed this pioneer, this ruby red granite uh, has sails across the nation. They were, they were very well known throughout the United States for, and unique and a very unique red granite. I, it's perhaps the finest red granite in the United States. Um, and they were the manufacturers of that ruby red granite. Um, of course, uh, used the memorials. Again, another headline first recognized by Ellis Cohn. Uh, Devoe was a very, uh, another manufacturer of, of granite. Um, but so it was, a, so it became a very popular and distinguished trademark of Marathon County. And back in the laws of 1971, the Wisconsin State Rock was was listed as red as red granite, and Marathon County certainly can claim a good good part of being the home for that for that Wisconsin red granite. And of course, the the uh, today we you go to Pine Grove Cemetery and or Restaurant Cemetery and cemeteries throughout Marathon County, Wisconsin. And you see this vibrant red um, granite markers shined to brilliance. Uh, this is the Anderson Brothers and Johnson Monument in Pine Grove Cemetery. Uh, but uh, Aspire, uh, one of the most distinguished monuments in, in Pine Grove Cemetery for sure, uh, a real tribute to the work that the Anderson Brothers and Johnson uh, company did for Marathon County, for Wisconsin, and for the United States. But there were, I have to mention that there were other uh, granite companies uh, in Wausau, Marathon Granite on 3rd Street in uh, up near the uh, Athletic Park today, uh, was, was here for a long time, as well as Lake 
Lake Wasa granite, uh, just to the west of Marathon, off of DeVoe Street, um, in the neighborhood of Athletic Park. So there were so there were other um, manufacturers, other monument makers of this Marathon. Uh, the Lake Wasa Granite uh, Company had something called Rose Red, which was also a very bright red red granite. So here we, again, we see that bright, brilliant red granite that uh, really marks the a certain great history of economic development of using our natural resources of Marathon County. And it was the Anderson brothers and Johnson uh, that really were perhaps the epitome of the company that really developed this and really became known for the for the uh, red granite of Marathon County. The Wisconsin Ruby Red became their trademark known throughout the United States. Uh, a very distinguished a company, a very distinguished manufacturing process and mineral that we have in Marathon County. So I tell this story, I know that there, um, the, there is an ad, there is an A, B, and J uh, quarry still active. The Michaels Company took uh, possession of Anderson Brothers and Johnson a while ago. I think they also took over the Lake Wassa and other quarries. So the Michaels Company pretty much has sole possession of some of the quarries in Marathon County. Uh, and I think their A, B, and J quarry is still up on Granite Road. Uh, up in the town of Maine. So with that, I conclude this. I, I apologize for the little of my confusion earlier on, um, but this is a little bit of a story of the Anderson Brothers and Johnson Company and their great contribution to the development of red granite uh, in Marathon County.